Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with a returning guest and expert, Millennial Mike. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. I got to tell you, I like that shirt. I like it's, that shirt. Uh, it's from your website. It says, no alligators. My number one rule when buying real estate. Dude, it's the, it is so important to me. It's the only picture in my first book. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. That's right. It's the only picture, yeah. So anyway, something I'm doing with all of my experts is I am having them think about supply destruction. Okay. It is a word or a phrase I have never used. I have never studied. Uh, I think has been created by the Federal Reserve. It is the most unpleasant, unintended consequence that we are all going to have to suffer through as real estate investors the next three or four years minimum. Mm. So uh, are you ready? Let's do it. So when you think about economics and you think about recessions and you think about the Federal Reserve's Mike, lots of people understand demand destruction. Mm. As interest rates rise, less and less people can buy homes, less companies can borrow money, you can buy less cars. Demand destruction is essentially something the Federal Reserve engineers. Mm. And if they do it wrong, there's a hard landing, we have a recession, right. all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I believe because the Federal Reserve kept rates too long for too low for too long. They created a two-year window where 70% of mortgages in the residential space were recast, that now we have this bubble or this entity or whatever you want to call it, where the 30-year mortgage with a two or a three on it is an asset. And it's an asset that people aren't going to give up and hence mm -hmm. is going to create wild supply destruction. So I'm asking all of my experts eight questions. Let me bring it up now. So here we go. Let me know when you can see it. I got you. So I believe there is going to be supply destruction. And I want you to think about, again, you're an out-of-state investor. If you want to use your experience in your region, perfect. That is totally okay. Sure. But, but essentially, I think there are, I think the supply of homes comes from one of eight buckets. Again, most people talk about demand destruction. We count transactions. But in order to have a just transaction, we also have to have supply. Mm -hmm. And it is the supply that I think is going to go down big. So here we go. Number one, in every market, there are people that own second homes or vacation homes or whatever, and mm -hmm. they're not using them anymore. And my thinking is in 2021, if you had a second home in Boise or Phoenix or Vegas or Miami, and you don't use it a lot, you might have sold because prices exploded higher. Right. I'm going to guess as rates go up in 20 this year and next year that if you didn't sell already, you're probably not going to sell. So when you think about that bucket with your experience, do you think that goes up or down, right? Negative number means you have less of them. Positive numbers means you have more of them. Do you think second home people don't want second homes goes up or down going forward? Mm. I think probably more people don't want their second home going forward into okay. this financial turmoil. Okay. Um, that being said, I, I think that they would like to sell. I don't know if they'll be able to because there's going to, as you said, demand destruction is going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to be harder to sell. And now we have been conditioned for all of these new crazy prices over the yeah. last two, not three years. Mm -hmm. And if people don't get what they feel they deserve, mm -hmm. are they actually going to sell? So I think they're they may want to get rid of it and cash in. I had a conversation with a guy at work just the other day. He's like, I'm hoping these prices can hold out for another six months to a year so I can sell mm. and move okay. to Texas. There you go. So, but, but that one's a little tough to predict. Okay. You want to call it flat? You want to call it up, down? What do you want to call it? I'll call it flat for now. Okay. All right. Next, downsize. Uh, you know, I don't know if this is something on your radar, but there's often talk about baby boomers who have five bedroom, three bath, two story homes. Mm -hmm. They don't want to sell or they want to sell. They want to go smaller, get one story. Right. But now there's a very good chance that if they do sell, they're going to go to a smaller home and have a mortgage payment that is the same or bigger because right. of rates. So my thinking is perhaps less people will downsize given that rates have doubled. I agree. I think less people will downsize. I think, I think they're going to be, they're going to be forced to stay where they are. They don't want to stay, but right. they're going to be yep. forced. Less so people. What, what percentage? Just use a round number of 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever. From, so you're talking about like right now, the current number of people downsizing, how many less will? 
Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say it'd be cut in half 50%. Okay. 50% less people will be able to downsize. Correct. That's what that says. Yes. Builders. Builders, hopefully, maybe will build more in this environment. Maybe they'll build affordable homes. <laughs> maybe they won't. Maybe the supply chain will keep screwing it all up. Mm -hmm. But again, one of the one area where supply comes is builders. So do you think builders build more or less? I think they I think they build less. Okay. How much less? Uh 30%. Okay. Because I think that just like with sellers who want to sell for top dollar, builders want to sell for top dollar. Okay. And builders have changed their pricing to reflect current and you know inflationary prices in their materials. Okay. And as they try to sell at the new prices, but can't have the demand to support it, they're not mm -hmm. going to be able to sell as much. They're going to have to build less, sell less. Cool. Flippers. Flipping, I you've heard me on my channel say last year was the best year ever to do lipstick flips. Mm -hmm. And I'm on record saying, whew, maybe not next year. What do you think? Uh, do you think flippers do more or less? I think flippers do more okay. because they realize they won't be able to sell it. So they're going to flip it to themselves. They're going to put a tenant in it and keep it. Uh, accidental. And then, okay. right. And then down the line, they're going to be looking for that opportunity to just refinance it at a, at, at, and get most of their money back out. All right. So they're going to be accidental burrs, if you will. Right. Exactly. Forced okay. into burrs. First ball, for, forced burrs. So- yeah. What do you think? Up, down? What do you I think, think it goes up 25%. Okay. Can't afford foreclose. This is this is one that's probably artificially high just because we haven't had anything for two years. Mm. Uh, this might be triple digits. It was for many of our other experts, right. but there will be more foreclosures and right. so short sales and deed and new. What do you think percentage wise? I think that our foreclosures stay flat with 2019 rates, but are triple the 2021 rates. Yeah, that's that's right where I was too. Yep, totally agree. Must sell, death, divorce, job transfers, this stuff, life happens before, life happens after. Maybe this doesn't move, maybe it does. What do you think? I think that this will be on an upward trend over the next 10 years. I couldn't okay. tell you exactly the percentage. So I would say it's it's flat, but it's growing. And the reason okay. is baby boomers are the largest, second largest generation currently alive right now. Millennials are technically larger. Yep. Uh, baby boomers have been retiring over the past 10, even 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, they are going to start dying. And I'm sorry if you're hearing this, baby yeah, boomers. Yeah, it happens. It happens. It, it, time, time is undefeated. It will come for all of us. Yes. And as those 80 million people, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously not every one of those is a homeowner, but there's probably mm -hmm. a significant amount of homes. They will die and pass away. Mm -hmm. When the asset then goes to their child or their heir, that person doesn't have the desire to make as much money as we've seen through all yep. real estate investing. Yeah, They're they happy to sell. It's just, hey, I got some free money. I'll sell it as soon as possible. Yep, totally. So agree. I would say that the that that number is going to increase. I'll just give it twenty five percent. Okay. But I think it's going to continue to increase. We're going to see eighty million deaths over the next ten to 15, 20 years. Yeah, totally agree. Investors, that's us, right? Mm -hmm. Are we going to be the investors that sell out, get seller finance deals like you found? Do, do they sell more? Do they sell less because they can't ten thirty one? Do they just cash out and take their chips? What do investors do? Because we own we own a fair amount of single family homes. I think that we'll probably sell less. Okay. I think that uh, we'll want to keep the yeah. current stuff we have at great rates. Exactly. And, I, and as, and I agree. Will be, it'll become our base. It'll be our foundational base we can fall back on. Totally so agree. I think we sell 25 to 30% less. All right. And then here's the big one. Move up buyers. This, this is the group that is the dot. We did 6 million existing homes last year. My guess is at least 50% of them are move up buyers. All the other seven make up the other 50, but move up buyers are going to increasingly find themselves trapped in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So what percent of those people would like to move, but when they do the math, won't move and won't sell? What do you I'd think? say 50%. Yeah, it's a big I think that these people are going to, and this is sad because this is, this is blue collar America. This yep. is, this is who you used to be. This is who I still am. Mm -hmm. This, these are the folks. This is the people who should be getting their opportunity to take advantage of the American dream. These are your millennials, your young gen X, your older gen Z. These are your 18 to 40 year old folks mm -hmm. who are looking to totally establish themselves. And for the second time in a 12 year period, we're hitting another major financial yeah. change. And that is going to just, kill them and kill their, their psychology, mm -hmm. uh, their, their, yeah, I don't know the right way to phrase it, but it's going to kill their mindset when it comes to buying houses. And it's, it's sad. Yeah. 
So in the end, folks, Millennial Mike's opinion, a lot like mine, we have supply destruction. And that's a phrase I just coined. I don't know if it's ever been said. Uh, but yeah, I think the Federal Reserve has inadvertently created supply destruction and the real estate market will not be the same for the next couple of years. Mike, where can people find you? Please uh, just look me up on YouTube, Millennial Mike. I also participated with within Zuber's course. I do the out-of-state investing section. If you have questions about investing, not in California, New York, Seattle, like me, and you want to go somewhere that's more affordable, watch my channel or send me a message on Instagram. Awesome. Thanks, buddy.